I do for the next project for this CNC machine is to do a little bit of metal work with it. Um, I'm going to cut some aluminium plate. We're going to face the aluminium plate. Then we're going to cut some, uh, some more tie down um, plates with it. Um, not only that, we're going to actually make some more T bolts out of um, coach bolts, the 8mm coach bolts bought from the local hardware. And all we're going to do is file two flats on the heads to fit inside the T slots and um, they'll do just fine. So um, let's go. Some of you by now may have looked me up on Google and you would have come across some of my patents for tooling. Well, next month, I'll go into more de deeper, de detail about tooling, but this, as I'm sure you'll recognize, apart from this half, um, as an impulse tool for uh, driving nails uh, with gas. And, uh, well, a lot of people do have problems with them, and uh, they have problems with them because they're not powerful enough. Well, I developed a, a technique of supercharging them because essentially they're an internal combustion engine. So what I've developed is as you put the nose onto a, a substrate, a piece of work, um, the compressor at the back automatically starts up and supercharges the combustion area. And uh, this tool, this particular tool, um, was developed originally by the manufacturer to produce uh, about 90 joules of energy output. Well, I can tell you that with this supercharging system, as with any automotive vehicle, you supercharge it, will produce four times that. So I'll go into more detail with the, uh, about this tool um, next month. Okay, to make the T-bolts, um, we can simply just file two flats. What we need to do is make sure that the, the flats are in line with the square on the underside of the head. So, first of all, what we need to do is put a couple of, this is just aluminium angle iron, what we in the trade call soft jaws. Because what we don't want to do, as we're gripping the, the, the bolt uh, from the, the shank and also on the thread, we don't want to damage the thread. So we line the bolt in here, like this. Just simply get a, a file and keep 90 degrees well, parallel with the, the bench. That's one flat. You see, it's one flat. You can use the underside square of the head as a sort of a a register to see whether you're parallel with the, the bottom flat, which I think we are. One T-bolt, so I should be doing that uh, to all these bolts now, and um, what are the set of T-bolts, decent T-bolts, for our CNC machine. One of the reasons why I made these T-bolts is because what I found is that um, cutting wood on this, this bed is fine. Uh, the bed is covered with quite hard rubber, and it's, it's very nice to work with. 
with wood. When it comes to aluminium, uh, I've found especially with aluminium about this size or smaller, um, when you clamp it down, uh, the aluminium tends to sink into the rubber. And um, when I surfaced this aluminium, I found that the, the distance, the, the, sorry, the depth here and depth here, um, there was a difference of um, 0 0.025. So a quarter of a millimeter, of a millimeter. Um, which is quite a lot, when, especially when you're dealing with aluminium or metal in general. In wood, well, you can get away with that all right. A quarter of a millimeter is you know, neither here nor there. But um, aluminium, when you're trying to do a fairly precision piece, uh, yeah, um, okay, so what I've decided to do is I've had some slabs of this um, chipboard um, in the workshop from left over from a, a kitchen reno renovation that I've done. Um, so what I'm doing is I've actually clamped this down on the table and I shall uh, write out some um, grooves and then drill some holes through to be able to put the T-bolts through uh, and clamp uh, material piece uh, down onto this and um, what I'll also do is prior to uh, in other words make this a, a semi-permanent fixture when I'm doing metal jobs then when I'm doing wood jobs I'll take this off from here. to look the slots on the other side it's now necessary to drill the eight and a half mil holes all the way through um, so what I don't want to happen I don't want to drill through into the into the bed at all I know the drill is going to come out uh, in the middle of the t-slot here or the rubber above it you know the slot in the rubber above it but I, I want to know exactly when that drill is coming out so what I'm going to do is lower the z-axis down and zero the z-axis so when I'm drilling blindly into the material I know exactly where the end of the drill is okay so it'll just be breaking through there so just go up to here on the z-axis and zero and then we know that that is the area where it just breaks through the material and we're not going to do any damage. Okay, let's drill a hole. So approximately, in actual fact, we can probably zero the, the y-axis as well here. So we, we get them all Start off and then line it all together. So I need to go up at approximately two millimeters. So what we will do is alter the setting here, the jog setting, to one millimeter per press of the button, and uh, come onto the Y axis plus here and one, two, plus two millimeters. And that's bang on. Where it's the, the, uh, the one here and here are going to be the lockdown bolts, and uh, 20 mil in from the edge on the back side, we're going to have two of the same. So we will zero the y axis. Right. Okay. There you go. All the holes are drill through now and I'll just clean this up with a bit of um, a bit of rubber dam paper for the glass paper and um, we'll flip it over and fit so it on. 
I've drilled my, uh, the, uh, rented it my slots, drilled my holes, they're 50 millimeter apart, apart from the, the, the back ones. So there's offset 30 mil. Um, what I need to do now is square the three faces up, so I'll probably do the back face as well. Uh, it's important to get these faces nice and square and square to the machine edge here. Uh, which gives me then a good reference point to um, place material in here to be machined. Um, I've got a, a 12 millimeter, uh, it's a 100 mil long, uh, three fluted uh, end mill, which is normally used for aluminium, um, which would be perfect to do this job. Now I've roughly squared the material up to the front edge of the machine. And um, of course, the tool will run around it and, and square it all up nicely. So far, so good. It did that pretty, uh, pretty easy. All that's left to do now is to um, cut them off. So let's um, see how easy that is. Okay, well there's the finished article. Uh, they're not bad. The first, uh, first cab off the rank. So. Um, I hope I've uh, interested uh, some of you out there and um, if you have any questions or, or requests, well I'll do my best to accommodate you and uh, if you want to uh, email me, uh, hopefully somewhere down here is uh, my email and uh, you're more than welcome to email me and uh, well, well, we'll see what happens. So it's uh, goodbye from me now, and um, I'm going to try and put one of these up uh, every month. Uh, if I can do it every fortnight, I will, if I can find the time. But um, hopefully I'll get used to this, uh, this camera work, and um, see you again next time. Oh, before I go, um, I think uh, the ne next month what I'm going to do is um, build a big bench um, about 1200 by 2.4 meters long um, six legs on casters uh, to, to put over in the middle of my workshop over there uh, I need it to, to be an assembly bench and a general workbench because my workbench is around the place here getting a bit old now and they're full so um, I'm going to clear some space in the middle of the shop and um, um, we'll make a workshop bench together so I'll see you next time bye now